Cool. Looks like we'll be getting started soon. Oh. Well, welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a minute. For some reason. Oh, there we go. All right. Awesome. I was just waiting for Robert's for your window to pop up. For some reason, it wasn't on our YouTube channel, but I think it's looking oh, good weird. now. Oh, cool. huh. um, all right. I think it's looking good now. Uh, cool. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you to everybody who is able to join us this evening. We're really excited about this chat and to learn a little bit more about our current exhibition at Union Hall, The Story of You and Me. Um, my name is Emma Paris Stoyer. I'm the Executive Director of Union Hall. If you haven't been to our space before or don't know who we are, we're a nonprofit arts exhibition and event space uh, located in Denver, Colorado. And um, yeah, I guess uh, super quickly, uh, I'd like to give a brief shout out to our sponsors who have been supporting all of our programming this year and make sure that we're able to pay equitable wages to all the artists and curators that we work with. Um, those sponsors are the Colorado Community Foundation, the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts, and Colorado Creative Industries, along with many other donors, but those are major donors for all of our programming this year. Uh, so we're really appreciative of their support. Um, and uh, yeah, our current exhibition is up through Saturday, September 17th. Uh, you can come by during our gallery hours, which are 12 to 6 p.m. Wednesdays through Saturdays. Uh, you can find more info on our website, unionhalldenver.org. And uh, we'll just have Robert go through and tell us all a little bit more about the story of you and me. They uh, guest curated this exhibition and also uh, have uh, artwork in the exhibition. Uh, so we'll learn a little bit more, ask some questions, and we will have time for Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions that you'd like to pass along, uh, you can add those into our uh, chat box in uh, YouTube, and we will get to those towards the end of the talk. So um, I'll let you take it away, Robert. Cool. Um, and just to um, start, I wanted to extend some gratitude to the Union Hall team. Um, Emma, of course, and Jess, um, just for being so helpful in putting this together from Chicago. So thank you so much for your help. Um, so the way that I kind of want to organize the talk, um, or is like less of a talk and more of um, sort of like a walkthrough of the gallery space. Um, we have excellent photos of the exhibition from Ray and I was able to put those together in the presentation. So um, basically what I wanna do is just like walk through my thinking of arranging the space. Um, the exhibition is called The Story of You and I, or You and Me, um, which is a quote from the Matt Elber song, um, handsome man. I don't know. I almost just drew a blank there. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get that up on the... Can you see this, Emma? Cool. Awesome. Um, so the story of you and me, um, which is a pull quote from the Matt Elber song, Handsome Man. Um, this song came out in 2014, if I remember correctly, around that time. Um, and it was a really meaningful um, song for me because it came around the time that I met my current husband, my husband, not that I have like many husbands. Um, and so it was like really foundational and like my understanding of myself in relation to others and intimacy. 
um, which is the sort of wellspring of this show. Um, I think intimacy is a really important subject. Um, I mean, I am a really indulgent person in sentimentality, sentimentality first and foremost. I think that um, it is, it, it gets sort of a bad rap as an emotion and a feeling, um, but it is a really complicated feeling. Um, sentimentality is tied in happiness and nostalgia, but also sadness. Um, and sitting with those feelings and really giving them space. So I think that is sort of the, um, the crux of the exhibition. Um, so this is what you sort of see when you come into the, um, the space, um, this really warm lit yellow wall, the story of you and me, keeping it really simple. Um, and the piece that I wanted to highlight next to the, um, the front wall is the piece by Eric Diaz Cortez. Um, oops, can I go? Cool. <laughs> this is Gabe's first fall. A lot of the work that we see from Erickson in the exhibition um, are pieces that he made during the um, pandemic. So sort of in this already intimate small time where we're um, with the people that we're closest to or sharing space with, but not with a lot of other people. So there's this sort of um, focus of relationship um, with our closest circles. And this piece really stands out to me. Um, it's sort of like a Mona Lisa when you stand in front of it. There's like the, this intimacy of the, the size of it. Um, it really only allows space for one viewer at a time. And it sort of acts like this little flame of a candle. Um, and we, we can see that in a few of other um, Erickson's other pieces. So this is our sort of entry piece. Um, it's inviting, it's sort of curious, um, and is a depiction of Erickson's partner, Gabe. Um, around the back side of the wall, so if you were to go down um, around the right side of the entrance wall, um, I've included this family portrait that I created of my husband, Nate and I, with our dog, Bug. Um, this is actually a piece from 2019, which is sort of a, a theme throughout the exhibition. I've included works all the way back to 2017. Um, and this was um, sort of the impetus piece for um, the thinking around this exhibition. Um, this is a piece that I've never really gotten to show um, in any exhibitions. And it's something that's really meaningful to me. And I feel like it it emits a lot of warmth um, when you stand in front of it because there is this yellow underpainting to the portrait. Um, so when light is hitting it, it does emit this like sort of warmth. And I wanted people to experience that. But so often when we create depictions of our loved ones and of our intimate relationships, um, they are sort of just for ourselves. So I kind of wanted to open that up. Um, so this is actually facing outside of the gallery. It's positioned next to the, the wall of the gallery or the window of the gallery. So you can see this from outside sort of inviting people in. Um, if you were to continue around the back side of that wall, then um, the L-shaped wall, there is this piece by Erickson Diaz Cortez called Two Boys from 2020 also. Um, with this work, I think it's really important to note like the relationship of the subjects. They're sort of um phalanging towards one another um i think that this is sort of where we get to start to see um metaphor like visual metaphor at play um with the title too it's very very obvious um we're thinking about like a relationship here that um goes beyond just the flowers and that actually leads us into the first vignette that i've put together um, with another one of Erickson's flower drawings um, flanked by two portraits that I've created um, at varying times. So um, on the right side actually is a portrait of myself and on the left side is a portrait of my husband, Nate, um, sort of with the same color schemes. And I think that these three pieces really speak to each other and give each other context. So we have Morning Glories um, from 2020 by Erickson and um, Again, we see these two flowers sort of resting together, um, touching one another. You can think about those like velvety petals of the morning glories sort of touching one another and intertwining. Um, 
what stands out to me is the complementary colors of the violets and the yellows. Um, and I, when I saw this, I immediately thought of this sketch that I had created of Nate um, called Front Range Sketch. Um, it's this portrait of Nate that I drew um, from one of our Boulder apartments um, of Nate standing in front of the Front Range. So I think those two color schemes sort of speak to one another. And then this self-portrait, Bird of Paradise, from 2017 that I created right after graduating from undergrad. Um, it was when Nate and I first moved into our first apartment together and I had shaved my head and dyed my hair yellow, like sort of blonde, um, bleached it blonde. And um, yeah, sort of uh, another momentous moment in Nate and I's relationship. So I think those three works kind of give context to one another. Um, you'll notice that the works that I've included in this vignette are pinned up with those sort of um, dissection pins. And I think at this point, maybe it's important to talk about um, a lot of these works are meant to sort of be thought of as scraps, um, like scraps of a relationship, scraps of a studio or a portfolio. Um, I was thinking a lot about Jose Esteban Munoz's um, Cruising Utopia and the idea of ephemera and trace um, as the only sort of evidence of queerness in history. So I think that ephemera and trace is sort of littering my, my um, portfolio. This work I've included um, is a portrait that I created of my husband Nate right before our wedding actually. So it was the summer that we um, got married and it's also from 2020, that pandemic time. And I think it is really interesting to include a lot of works from that time um, between Erickson and I, um, because like I said earlier, we are thinking about those like intimate relationships at that moment, like being very insular and closed off. Um, but also learning so much about ourselves. I, I read an article about how many people um, came out as like gender non-conforming or trans during the pandemic because we were sort of forced to spend so much time with ourselves and learn about ourselves. Um, so this portrait, Nate, um, was created during that time as well. Um, and I think that physically in the gallery space, what this portrait sort of does is give us direction into the next space, which is where M. Van Loan's video T for T is located. So in sort of like the back corner of the gallery, um, in the darkest part of the gallery, we've included M's video T for T from 2022. Um, this video, this film is um, composed of mostly inverted imagery of um, two figures, two trans figures, um, laying in bed and interacting in bed with one another. Um, and you see from this still, this is the most intimate I've ever been with a partner. It is this um, very soft, very quiet, um, literally quiet because there is no, no audio or um, no speaking in the video. It's just captions and um, sound elements. And I think that this piece for me with the inverted imagery sort of talks about a history of queerness as well. Um, invert, I know it's been used as um, slang and also as slur, um, but also as an identifier um, for trans and queer individuals. So it, throughout history, um, I think more specifically, like in the early 1900s, um, trans and queer individuals were referred to as inverts. Um, so I think this imagery sort of speaks to that. And I also think that the yellow text speaks to a history of film, um, which I really appreciate as well. Moving on from that corner, we see Jordan Ramsey Ismail's um, in the heat of the summer. I wanna make sure that I have that title right. Um, in the heat of our eternal summer. So this is a five part series that was created this year. Um, and I think the original intention was to start sort of with the red piece and move to um, move sort of in that way incrementally. Um, what I like about this is 
having it sort of like right after M's video piece, we do, we are able to sort of think about this piece incrementally or like as a, a sort of filmic series um, or stills of some sort of like short film. Um, so here is In the Heat of Our Eternal Summer. You definitely get this like tactile sense of touch in Jordan's work. Um, you can see that they are sort of feeling out the portrait. Um, and Jordan is also someone, they and I have talked about this um, at kind of great extent at the opening actually about um, Jose Esteban Munoz cruising Utopia and sort of using imagination to imagine a brighter queer future. Um, when I look at Jordan's work, I think about how hard, but also how much I love myself, like in, in seeing like a, a person embracing themselves, there is sort of like a, a science fiction involved in that, but it also is a way of like manifesting this idea of self-love. And I think that that is a form of intimacy that a lot of us um, ignore. Um, this is such a silly uh, reference, but Tracy Ellis Ross had an Instagram live where she was talking about self-love during the pandemic and just like the act of like putting on lotion on your own hands and like really taking the time to feel your own skin um, and spend time with yourself and your body. Um, that's sort of the, the feeling that I get from looking at Jordan's work. And there is that, like, like I said earlier, like this very like tactile quality to the way that Jordan is feeling out the portrait. Um, around the corner from there, um, there is this vignette with the raked lighting. Um, I think, I think there's another photo of this in the next few slides, but, um, this, um, trio, this vignette is another, um, combination of Erickson and I's work. Um, so this is Rostro Maninero from 2020. Um, another portrait of Erickson's partner, Gabe. Similar size also. Um, these are four and a half by six inches. Um, this portrait, um, Nate with chromatic aberration, which is colored pencil, watercolor, and um, oil paint on paper and Curly Curl from 2020 as well. Um, so these three scenes are all bedroom scenes. Um, and I wanted to include them on this wall together with this raked lighting to give us that feeling of like being intimate with a partner in the bedroom. Um, and not even in a sexual way, I think so often when um, we talk about intimacy or like love, um, particularly in queer relationships, they are sexualized. Um, and I sort of intentionally wanted to think about these portraits as not necessarily being sexual. Like they definitely could be, this is not by any means a, a sexual negative show, but um, it's not explicit in any way. And I wanted that lighting to feel really lovely, like falling on these portraits. Um, and also that like warm space of all, all three of these portraits are so like yellow and warm. Um, which is kind of, yeah, like it, like a really intimate, like a really glowy, I think of golden hour, um, that sort of, that sort of feeling. And then the final portrait included in the show is this, um, Bug and Papo oil painting, which I created this year. Um, just another depiction of my partner and our dog, um, sort of at golden hour as well. So I think there is a nice conversation across the gallery between those three works and this portrait. Um, this portrait in particular is sort of um, about Nate and I, but not including myself in the ex or in the um, portrait itself. Um, so I've included mallard ducks up in the corners of this um, painting, um, just to talk about like, queerness in nature, but also um, using nature to represent our relationship as well. Um, so you see two ducks with male coloration um, sort of flying towards one another over the horizon. And then, yeah, I've, I've um, included my dog, of course, because I'm obsessed with her. So, 
So that is the exhibition. Um, I, I'm hoping what comes across more than anything is the warmth of all these works. I think there is like an undeniable like glowiness. There's a warmth to them. Um, and I think the reason that I've chosen these three artists and myself to be together, um, of course, when you're an artist and you have the opportunity to curate a show, like you're going to include the people that you want to be with, uh, like be shown with. And these are all artists that I really admire, but um, what I especially admire about their work is um, they do sort of have that sense of sentimentality that I approach a lot of my work with. So that is sort of the connecting thread. Perfect. Oops, stop sharing. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for that overview, Robert. Um, it's just, I mean, it really is such a beautiful, intimate show. And I feel like every time I come into this space, I see new details. And uh, I think a lot of people are just really drawn into the space for all of the reasons that you talked about. I mean, just that warmth and uh, welcoming feeling and even from uh, the family portrait uh, from the outside, it just feels like you're walking into somebody's uh, living room or this collective living room of you and the other artists. And so, um, yeah, I think that it's really palpable to anybody who's coming into our space. And it's great to hear a little bit more uh, details from you on the process behind it. Um, I feel like there is a lot more uh, that went into some of those little details um, that created that feeling as well. So we'd love to hear a little bit more about um the vinyl text is actually your handwriting right um and yeah that was a pretty intentional choice as well right yeah um <laughs> Nate was actually making fun of me for that because he was saying that it's maybe a little too Taylor Swift album cover but um yeah I thought it was important to like include um I mean, I was trying to think of fonts that would be meaningful, but like not sterile. And I think the worst thing that could be done was to like put these like very intimate works into a gallery space and then sterilize them with, you know, like uh, like an Arial font or Helvetica or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it felt meaningful to me to like have that text be my own handwriting. Um, sort of like you're writing a love letter because I do think that this exhibition is a sort of love letter. Um, I was thinking about it as, yeah, like a, a love letter to our community, like making space for intimacy, making space for like specifically um, intimacy that is not often seen um, or maybe overly sexualized, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think that you did that um, in a really beautiful way of, of being able to yeah, show intimacy that's not sexualized and just being able to see, uh, have a window inside uh, different relationships of all different kinds and um, uh, doing a, a really respectful and, and um, uh, lovely way. So yeah, I really appreciated that. Um, and yeah, I, I think it was just the right amount of Taylor Swift album cover. Just, <laughs> cool. just like enough of a hint, yeah there is yeah. that that tinge <laughs> yeah and I think that that I love the orange uh hue and that and that color on that warmth that really uh floated between all of the different works um as well as the lighting um I feel like you always whenever you work with us in exhibitions or have in the past you always do such um really cool things with the lights that I mm -hmm. never would think to do and uh it was really great to see how you played around with them and it it does really look like sunlight streaming through a window to the point where I had somebody I forget who it was but somebody was um trying to figure out like where what where the light was coming from and didn't realize it was the lighting so um yeah yeah I'll have to shout out my undergrad education for that um University of Wisconsin Stout um specifically Kelly O'Brien in the sculpture department at the University of Wisconsin Stout. Um, my undergrad degree is in sculpture and a lot of that was thinking about installation and how you present your work. So not even just like sculpture physically, but like thinking about space um, 
yeah, so I'm always thinking about how we're presenting even just a drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you think about that a lot and even to the point of talking about um, I guess I hadn't even realized uh, how small all of the works were in the space because of the way that you utilize space and utilize lighting to be able to showcase them. And I do love that you have to get up close to a lot of the works to be able to really appreciate them and, and get all those little details. Um, mm -hmm. You did another exhibition with us in 2020 through our Rough Gems curatorial program um, called There Is Really No Difference Between Art and Prayer. And uh, mm -hmm. to me, I felt like there were some commonalities. Uh, it was a lot of smaller works and you also utilize lighting and space in um, really unique uh, ways. And it also felt like a really intimate show. So I'm wondering uh, how those two experiences compared and uh, what, yeah, would just love to hear a little bit more about maybe the similarities or the differences between those two experiences for you. Yeah, I think in both cases, the things that I was thinking about were very, like, tied to sentimentality. Um, and there is really no difference between art and prayer, um, which included Joe Sines, Jess Cole, and Jacob Aaron Schroeder. Um, those were three artists that I was recognizing themes in my own work, in their work as well. Um, so I approached it very much in the same way, like, I think, yeah, I guess that oh, that actually kind of gets to a bigger idea of um, not creating art in a vacuum. Like so often, like our ideas are reflections and resonations of the art world around us um, and the other creators that are creating in, in our space and in our time. Um, and so often I get a lot of context from my own work, from thinking about what other people are doing. Um, I think, yeah, that, that's sort of like, that's my curatorial approach, I guess, like as an artist approaching curatorial projects. Um, but that work specifically in, um, there is really, there is no difference between art and prayer. I was thinking about queerness in relation to religion um, and also art in relation to religion um, and time spent in art making, um, which is another, like creating time or creating art is this very like time staking thing. It's this very devotional act, um, very pious act to create art. Um, and it gives a lot of respect um, to your subject matter. And that's the same thing I'm thinking about with this exhibition. Um, when we are creating work depicting a loved one, that is extended time spent with that loved one even though they are not like physically there with you necessarily sometimes they are um but you are taking that relationship and like mulling it over and spending time with it and undeniably like in creating that work like thinking about that relationship so it is very much like an extended time of intimacy yeah it is yeah very similar to that last exhibition yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think at surface level, they seem like very different themes, but when you, mm -hmm. when it comes down to those little details and um, the, yeah, the feelings and sentiments that you're trying to get across, it, it there were some similarities for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I always find it interesting how, um, how much some curators really pull from their own artistic practice and in the shows that they're doing. Um, this is your first show being a curator and an artist in the same exhibition, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I guess, yeah, what do how I is that, that being doing uh, both of those at the same time? <laughs> it's kind of, well, I, I think like with, um, there is really no difference between art and prayer. Um, yeah, it was like ideas that I had in my work, but I was like sort of, yeah, like I said, recognizing them in other people's work. Mm -hmm. um, in this um, example, I actually had the opportunity to, like with the vignettes of Erickson and I's work specifically, um, show those relationships, like show the context that I was thinking about, um, which I think is a little bit more clear, maybe a little bit more self-serving in some ways, but also, um, yeah, I think it is important to like, 
see people's work next to each other and like understand that conversation. And it's important for me too, I guess, to like, er, and what a privilege to like see your work next to people that you really admire. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, a lot of artists are drawn to work that is somewhat similar or speaks to you um, and your own experiences, which oftentimes mm -hmm. present in your own artwork, um, but not, there's not a lot of people who can really draw those connections um, and be able to think about like visually and aesthetically how to weave them all together. And so um, I felt like it was really well done in the show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just a quick reminder, we have a few more questions, um, but if we will have time for Q&A, so if you do have any questions, anybody who's tuning in, um, feel free to just add those in the chat box uh, on our YouTube channel and we'll get to those soon. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, how, how queerness and, um, presents uh, throughout this exhibition. I feel like it was mentioned a few times, but I think something I really love about this show is the fact that it features all um, LGBTQIA uh, artists um, who are queer, non-binary or trans and um, celebrates uh, their experiences and their relationships, um, but it's not wholly focused on queerness as the central theme for the show or the uh, central uh, commonality between all of these artists and their works. Um, so I guess the question I'm getting to is I, I love to little, learn a little bit more about that thought process in selecting the artists mm -hmm. and putting together the theme and whether that was uh, an intentional choice for you. Yeah, I think um, whether you're creating art or curating a show, uh, th those things are coming from a specific perspective. And in this case, um, my perspective is permeating a lot of different layers of the exhibition. Um, and I happen to be creating work and curating from this perspective of being non-binary and being queer um, and being deeply sentimental. So obviously all those things like permeated into the show. Um, we've, we've gotten a long history of a very limited perspective in art history. And I think at this point, um, it is understandable and genuine to um, create space for what you know. And so what I know is definitely at the forefront of the show. Um, I think in that regard though, I didn't really overthink it. Like I, I mostly just wanted to include people in the show that I really appreciate and I wanted to see my work next to. And those people happen to be three non-binary people and all four queer people. Um, so that's just kind of how it turned out and it wasn't really planned in that sense. But um, the intimacy that I did want to see and did want to be in conversation with happened to be like queer intimate relationships um, and not even just like queer interpersonally but like with Jordan's work, like queer singularly. Um, and so, yeah, it feels like really natural in that sense, um, but also really joyous, I think, because giving space to like queerness um, is such an important thing right now, obviously um, with the threats to like queer marriage, um, threats to marginalized bodies, um, the like rising toll of like, um, crimes against trans bodies specifically. So I think that it is really important to highlight um, an intimacy and a love in a way that isn't sexualized and isn't, I don't know, exploitative um, in any way. Like it is, it is very much just pure. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think that yeah, I really like the thinking behind it. And um, yeah, obviously it shouldn't be something revolutionary to be showing queer relationships and not um, sexualizing them or trying to profit off them in some way, but it feels yeah. uh, like a really genuine approach to just bring all those artists together. And um, I yeah, and I guess I should like also make clear that um, 
like queer sex is important to see as well. But I, I think that there is like a volume of queer sex in the art world at this point um, that is kind of making it, I don't know. I don't know the word that I'm, I would necessarily use to describe that, but there is like such a high volume of sexualized queer relationships um, in the art world that it, it feels like that is the majority of what is seen of queerness. Um, and yeah, I think like intimate intimacy can be more than just sex. Mm. Yeah, and it's important to see a breadth of uh, different experiences and different types of um, relationships and intimacy. So yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. And I love the inclusion of self-intimacy throughout the exhibition as well, in particular in Jordan's work and um, being mm -hmm. able to see intimacy, not just with a partner, but how you can find that just within yourself. Um, and I do feel like that's something that is more that a lot of folks are, are thinking about a lot more, especially over the past few years of the pandemic and having more time in isolation to be with yourself and wanting to feel more comfortable in that. So um, I love that you included uh, self-intimacy as a form of intimacy in the show. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and I think um, that intimacy is definitely really visible for the viewer as well. If, you are to like stand in front of these small works and like really pay attention to like each individual mark of, of the work you're looking at or um, I don't know, each frame of the video that you're viewing. I think that those things are all really intimate marks. Like you can think about it like strokes of a love letter essentially. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess, Looking back at my questions, uh, we don't have any questions from the chat yet. Um, so still waiting on any questions from any audience members. So I guess I'll keep chugging along. <laughs> um, so you're based in Chicago now. You recently left us, <laughs> us in Denver, <laughs> um, <laughs> sadly, but hopefully you'll you know be back to visit at least. Um, but I know you have some projects, different projects coming up. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, some of the art projects or curatorial projects that you have in your future. So folks can keep an eye out for those and uh, hopefully be able to see some of your exhibitions in the future. Yeah, totally. Um, right now I'm working out of the Bridgeport Art Center here in Chicago, um, down in Bridgeport. Um, so that's where my studio is. I'm working on two solo exhibitions right now. So one will be with 1969 Gallery in November in New York. Um, and the second will be at the Valley and Taos um, with Ari. And looking very much forward to those. Um, lots of work to be done. I'll just share about the um, other three artists in the exhibition as well. And I'm yeah. on my phone so I don't get any of this wrong. Oops, is my microphone still on? There we go. Um, so M. Van Loan is um, going to be starting a new job instructing time-based art at CSU at Fort Collins this next semester. So they'll be working up in Fort Collins, which is very exciting. Um, Jordan Ramsey Ismail um, is going to have a solo show coming up in October in Iowa City at the Public Space One and is also included in a group show called the um, oh, I Sing the Body Electric, which is curated by Alex De Julio and Neo Varden um, at Dune Alpin in East Hampton, New York. And that actually opens tomorrow. So I'm very excited to see images of that. Um, and Erickson Diaz Cortez is currently making work and residing in Providence, Rhode Island and very much looking forward to the um, work that they've been sharing snippets of on Instagram. There is this recent um, portrait of Gabe that um, he posted and it's of Gabe working in the studio and sort of like kneeling in front of one of his paintings and it's very exciting. So very much looking forward to seeing more of that. Awesome, thanks for running through all of that. Um, yeah. And how can uh, we all follow you on social media and uh, through your website? 
Yeah, um, my social media is at Robert Martin Art on Instagram. Um, my website is www.rmsculpture.com. Um, and we have links to the other artists on the website, I believe, on the Union Hall website. Perfect. Um, I can just look at them really quick. So um, Jordan Ramsey Ismail is... Yeah, we do have those um, definitely linked on our website. Our website is unionhalldenver.org. And then uh, cool. right at the top, there's a link to go see more info on this exhibition specifically. And there's uh, bios for all of the artists and links to all their websites and social. So you can also find that there. Cool. Um, yeah, I was going to say Jordan's name and then it was that is their name on Instagram. So. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, and we just have one question uh, from the chat. Just, um, I'm curious how Union Hall Space lends to exhibitions, uh, to the exhibition's concept. Uh, is Union Hall Space specifically sentimental for you? Or was that in the thinking behind the exhibition, oh, the gallery space? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I think there is definitely some like, sentimentality involved in like leaving the Union Hall space because the first exhibition I curated with Union Hall through Rough Gems was actually in 2020. Um, so before I even moved to Denver um, and then working with Union Hall over the past year um, on Rough Gems and then now curating this exhibition like outside of Rough Gems um, yeah, I think that, that there is like sentimentality involved in that for me. Um, and that might have informed why I wanted to curate this exhibition. Um, but I think the space itself, like for me, every time I enter the Union Hall space, um, because it's unlike any other uh, art space, um, it is sort of like you, you feel like you're entering down into this comfortable, like, warm cove um or that's how I feel I guess when I enter it um the the walls being dark um it's not like a sterile art environment like it's not a white cube um and so there is like a comfort involved in that for me and yeah I think that like Union Hall is a sentimental place for me for sure mm -hmm. well I didn't realize that, so uh, your first exhibition with us was before you'd moved to Denver? And this one yeah, it was when I was, was living in Boulder, away. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, that is funny. Yeah, that is really funny. Um, yeah, I feel like sentimental because your uh, first exhibition was the last one that we had before COVID. I think it closed, um, right, when yeah, we were shutting yeah. down for COVID and it stayed almost, a lot of the work stayed on our walls and the walls stayed red for months afterwards uh, until we were able to fully deinstall. So um, yeah, I guess sort of a, a sentimental touch point for us as well, working with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sort of lingered in the space for a long time, yeah. <laughs> Which we loved. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we have one more question in the chat actually it says, You've spoken of joy in regards to intimacy and queerness, uh, clearly showing some overlapping understanding of the themes. Uh, could you speak more specifically on the way you see joy implemented here? I love that. Yeah, I think um, joy for me is really just recognizing, what do I wanna say about that? Um, I, I delivered this whole like speech at the Denver Art Museum of, queer joy and sunsets representing queer joy for me and recognizing queerness in the world around me as a way of bringing joy or like understanding joy and recognizing joy. Um, and I do think that this exhibition is very much about like the small quiet moments. Um, and so often you, you, so I, <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of therapy books lately on audiobook when I am painting. Um, you nice. cannot appreciate um, or you cannot experience joy without um, appreciation and gratitude um, for what you have. And I think 
creating artwork about these small intimate moments is a way of showing gratitude for what we have. Um, and also in curating this exhibition, I am showing gratitude for these literal scraps in our, in our portfolios. Um, for, in my case, specifically, no one else is making scraps, but um, I think, yeah, I think the exhibition is a, a note of gratitude and the works themselves that are included are notes of gratitude. And I think the only way you can experience joy is with gratitude. And yeah, so those two things are intertwined for me. Yeah, I think that was really eloquently said. And um, I I didn't even think about it that way, but uh, that makes a lot of sense, I think, in relation to the show and showing gratitude for those around you and those you're in relationships with and doing that through mm -hmm. artwork. Um, I feel like some of the most meaningful pieces of artwork that I have are little, you know, scraps, as you say, even though <laughs> your scraps are far better <laughs> than anything most <laughs> other people could do. But um, I think those are some of the most meaningful uh, works of art for people or, or um, sketches that a friend or a uh, loved one has made for them. So, um, or sketches of a loved one. So I think that um, it definitely, uh, connotes joy <laughs> in a lot of ways and gratitude. Mm. Awesome. Um, well, doesn't look like we have any other questions in the chat. So uh, I guess we'll wrap up a little bit early, but again, there's more information at unionhalldenver.org on the exhibition itself. The show is up through Saturday, September 17th, and we're open Wednesdays through Saturdays, 12 to 6 p.m., um, and yeah, it was really a pleasure to have you, uh, curate this exhibition and have your work in the exhibition. Um, and I really appreciate you being here and telling us all a little bit more about the show and, uh, how you put it all together. So thank you. Thank you so much, Emma. And thank you to, um, Em and Jordan and Erickson. Thank you so much for letting me share your work alongside mine. And yeah, thanks Union Hall. Love Thank it. you. <laughs> well, have a good evening. And uh, this will also be on our YouTube channel and definitely if anybody wants to uh, watch in the future. So thank you to our audience for being here. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Bye. Bye.